Hello and welcome to yet another video by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in this video I'll be pitting GIMP against Photoshop directly. I'm going to give myself 90 seconds to remove the background of an image in both software. Afterwards we're going to take a look at the processes and results for both software, see where the two software were different, and also see which one performed better under this test. I'll be using GIMP 2.10.18 as well as Photoshop CC 2020 for this video. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com, including my brand new Fundamentals of Photo Editing in Darktable course. And finally, you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to things like my GIMP Help Center app, ebooks like my GIMP Book of Layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium subscription off with a seven day free trial and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the photo I'll be using for today's video. Just come over here and I went with the medium option. So here is the photo opened up in Photoshop, and then here is the photo in GIMP. All right, so a couple of ground rules I want to start off with. Number one is I am using the same size photo, the same exact photo for both programs. Number two is I've actually created a background layer here. So this is in GIMP in the layers panel, and then over here in Photoshop, I also have a background layer. So they're both the same exact color background layer. Number three is that I'm going to be using whatever tools I feel necessary and that I can get to within the 90 second time frame for both programs. So I'm not really going to stick to one tool or stick to the same tools for both programs. I'm gonna use whatever I think is the best tool for that program and try to use it as expediently as possible, as efficiently as possible in order to erase the background the best I can inside of that time frame. And finally, I'm not going to speed through any of the editing. I'm not going to do like a time lapse or anything like that. I'm just gonna do the straight 90 seconds not edited for both programs. That way we can have a more fair assessment at the end as to what both programs were able to accomplish. I will be timing myself using my phone and I'm gonna set this to one minute 31 seconds. That way I have time to hit the start button and then set the phone down. So let's start first off in Photoshop. When the timer is up, I'm just gonna lift my hands up and I can't edit from that point on and then we're gonna move on to GIMP after that. So here we go, let's start with Photoshop here. All right, here we go. And by the way, real quick, I will be talking through the tools I'm using and why I'm choosing that tool. I'm going to try to do it in a way that's not going to add to the time it takes to erase things in the background here. So for those of you who aren't native English speakers, I apologize ahead of time because I will be talking quickly. But here we go, three, two, one. All right, so I'm gonna start off by grabbing the object selection tool and click select subject. So there it goes. I'm gonna come over here to select and mask. So I'll hit the Z key, click to zoom in. You can see the background showing through the hair there. So I'll grab the refinement brush here and I have this set to 100% transparency there. And I'm just gonna paint this. This is bringing back some of the hair follicles that Photoshop photoshopped out if I wanna use that verb. So there we go. And everything else is gonna be better off on the mask. So I'll click OK. And here I'm gonna click on the layer, click to create a layer mask. And now I'm gonna hit the B key to grab the brush. Black and white are my colors here. So starting with white, click, shift click to draw in straight line mode. And that's pretty much cleaned up there. We'll bring that in. Bring some of that in. And then right here I'll hit the X key, switch over to black. And I'll paint this out. Looks pretty good there. And I need to switch over back. Actually, let's stay with black. And I'm just going to paint some of this out, the darker stuff. So some of those hairs will get painted out now just because I'm kind of rushing this. And then hit the X key. All right. So that's it for Photoshop. We will get through this. We'll see what I did here. Let me just exit out of that timer. That looks pretty decent. 
And now we're just going to minimize this. And don't worry, we'll get to the fact that I could have done a better job with that uh, just based on, I'm not gonna get into it right now. But now let's move over to GIMP here and I'll start on the move tool here. So we're gonna do the same thing, minute and a half, 90 seconds to erase the background on here. Let's see how I can do. Again, I will be talking fast, so I apologize for the non-native English speakers, but here we go, three, two, one. So I'm gonna start by grabbing the foreground select tool and I have to circle the foreground object. Hit the enter key, make sure I'm in draw foreground, increase the size using the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard, increasing the size of the brush here. So with the foreground tool in GIMP, you paint whatever it is the foreground object is. I'll decrease this. The better job you do at this portion, the less time you have to spend refining it. So let me just grab this part, hit the enter key. So this is going to create the selection area. All right, so that's the area we're gonna have selected, control and zoom in with the mouse wheel, decrease the size of the brush here, make sure it's set to draw background. And I'm going to draw on that portion there. So this is where a lot of time gets sucked up in GIMP is waiting for the algorithm to go, but now I'm going to draw the foreground part there. All right, so now I'm gonna hit the enter key to create a selection area. And you can see there's some parts we need to clean up. So I'll right click, add layer mask, selection, click add. So there I'll hit control shift A and we've added the layer mask. I'll grab the paintbrush tool, hit the X key to switch over. And now I'm just going to paint some of these objects paint some of these areas here. Very hard to think and talk this fast. That looks pretty decent there. That looks pretty decent. All right. I didn't have time to get to the hair for GIMP, so we'll stop the timer there. And still looks pretty good, even though I didn't touch the hair. So yeah, let's, let's analyze what happened here. And I know that probably sounded like you were at an auction or something, but Let's come back to Photoshop. Let's hit the Z key and click the zoom in. So the hair, we used that refining brush to try to bring back some of the hair, but that brought back a lot of black. So that's why I went through and painted on the layer mask to try to paint some of that out. And what you got was sort of this result here, which doesn't look too terrible, but it doesn't look great either. But if I scroll down, I missed that part. I probably could have got it if I had time, if I knew it was there ahead of time. And then this portion there, that part could be cleaned up, but for the most part, that looks good. This side looks pretty good and did a pretty clean job of selecting around this object. Coming up here, I cleaned this up. Obviously could have done a slightly better job, but still looks pretty good. And then there's some portion of the green in here. So that looks good and I'll hold the Alt key, zoom out. So yeah, Photoshop didn't turn out perfectly. Uh, it did turn out pretty good. I will say the main benefit of Photoshop was that it did allow me to spend more time on refining the mask instead of having to wait for the algorithm to do its work and then for me to have a little time to refine the mask. So, but the final result here, as you can see, does look decent. But now I'm going to come over to GIMP and for those of you who aren't aware, GIMP is a free program. It's an awesome photo manipulation and photo editing program. So this did a pretty good job with the foreground select tool. I'll hit the Z key and zoom in here. So you'll see it actually did a pretty decent job with the hair. If I had a few more seconds, I could have come in here and painted on the layer mask to try to smooth that out like we did with Photoshop. But even without having to do that, it still turned out pretty decent. I'll scroll down. There's some parts sticking out there that the algorithm didn't get and I could have cleaned up this right here as well. Um, there's some areas here that could have been cleaned up. Uh, but scrolling down, we did have a chance to clean up some of this so that doesn't look too bad. I could have cleaned that up better. Coming over here, you could see as well here, uh, there's a couple areas that could be cleaned up but overall not too bad. And then up here, this little chunk is probably the biggest mistake that got left out. So same with these portions here, these parts of the background got left out. But if I hold control and zoom out, it still looks pretty good. It did a very good job inside of that 90 second time frame of clearing out the background and leaving the foreground without me having to do a whole lot of work. So the main thing to take away from this video is that both programs have impressive AI driven selection tools 
Photoshop does have a slight edge in my opinion in terms of performance and the accuracy of the AI driven selection tool. However, GIMP of course has the edge in the fact that it's totally free so you don't have to pay anything for it. Both programs did an imperfect job so you would have to go in with both of these programs after that 90 seconds which that's a totally artificial deadline. Nobody has that kind of deadline. But you would have to go in and clean up that layer mask after the fact a little bit no matter what program you're using. And here is a final side-by-side -side comparison of the two photos created by the two software. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.